In this edition of Mice TV, I had the opportunity to speak with Dr. Susan Jacob, creator of the CARES procedure, a novel approach that has transformed care for patients with Tourette Apollos. Building on that foundation, she now introduces customized graphene cut cares, a tailored technique designed for greater precision, better outcomes, and new possibilities in biologic corneal implants. Dr. Jacob, thank you for joining us today. We are here in India for APHCRS. What does it mean to you and for the international ophthalmic community to have this exchange of ideas here in India? I think it's really exciting to be here in Ahmedabad. It's always nice to have this uh, in India, an international conference in India, because you know you get to see all the international faculty who come here and who present their work. And it's so much more accessible to the Indian uh, population uh, that it's great that we're able to do this here and host such a big conference. You have pioneered several innovations in cornea surgery. Can you briefly explain what customized trefine cut cares is? Basically, the trefine is two double blades in a single trefine. What that does is it allows you to very quickly cut out a segment of cares. And then based on the topographic plan, the surgeon or the eye bank technician or an assistant can very quickly cut the segment into the customized shape. It's so simple that you can actually finish it in about you know 12 to 15 seconds. It's that quick and fast. How does the customization process translate to a different optical or biomechanical effect on the cornea? Keratoconus, you know, we kind of give it a blanket definition that it's steepening of the cornea. But that's not how it works. There is steepening of the cornea, but the steepening of the cornea really varies. So one patient you might have who's more steep centrally, another patient you might have who's more steep peripherally. That area of steepness or that gradation is going to change throughout. So you don't want to put a single non-customized, uh, you know, segment and hope that it gives you the best result. That's not going to happen. Because you're changing the thickness and the uh, taper, it really makes a lot of difference uh, to the uh, optical properties of the cornea. The amount of thickness that you put will also change the amount of flattening. So if you can vary the amount of thickness, basically by tapering the segment, then obviously you're going to be able to vary the amount of flattening that you're getting around the cornea. So if you can customize it that way, then you really get the best part possible optics for the patient. We all know that uh Cares is for progressive keratoconus. Does the customization process bring any change in this scenario? Yes, of course. The treatment for progressive keratoconus is uh, twofold. One is uh, to get the best possible refraction or optics for the patient. And second is to stabilize the disease. Now we've got two beautiful treatments here which really complement each other very, very well. Uh, one is cares and second is cross-linking. So what CARES does is it improves the optics of the cornea and therefore the visual quality of the patient to a great extent. According to newer studies which have been done in Canada, also improves the biomechanics of the cornea which means that it does also help stabilize the cornea to an extent. But remember you also have cross-linking which has got a long history as well and we know that cross-linking works by also acting to stabilize the cornea and it's a major one, it's a major surgery that's going to stabilize the cornea. So when you combine these two, you get the best possible effect. Visual improvement secondary to cares, you get some stabilization secondary to cares and you get massive stabilization secondary to cross-linking. So the best way to do this in progressive keratoconus is to combine the two procedures. How do you monitor these patients over time? We really have been following up these patients for very long. Beyond the first post-operative uh, post month where we follow them up closer, we call them every uh, three months and then uh, every six months for a few years. And then if we see everything stable and remaining so, we uh, ask them to come every year if they are from very far off or six monthly if they are living close by. And at every visit, we do a battery of tests for these patients. So the amount of data that we have is uh, quite a lot and we've been seeing excellent results with all this data. Are there opportunities for integrating AI to further refine the customization process in the future? We've got a lot of data, as I said, and we are, uh, of course, trying to do all these things uh, with that, uh, especially AI. Uh, and what we hope to do is just uh, not just by integrating uh, the workflow or the algorithm, but also including AI and machine learning into it so that, you know, you're finally able to put in so many aspects of the patient, the vision, the refraction, the aberrations, the biomechanics and everything and integrating it so that you are finally able to get something that uh, works much better than any individual piece alone. So that's definitely something we are looking at. What do you see as the next big step in biological corneal implants beyond CARES? I have got uh, uh, my own nomogram, which I call as a Jacob uh, Cares nomogram. And that's what I'm working on right now. It's uh, quite a lot into place. Uh, we do about 50 patients every month at our center alone, not including our other centers. And it's been giving us really great results for those patients. Now, the next step is, of course, to make it accessible to everyone. And that is what I'm working on uh, right now. What key message would you like to share with ophthalmologists who are considering 
customize Straphene Cut Cares as their next step in patient care. It's very simple to do, it's very easy to integrate into your practice. It's currently much easier, much faster and you can also do much more customized shape which gives you a lot of uh, leeway in how to treat these patients extremely well. Where can we follow you and let our audience know what you have got coming up? Uh, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, I post whatever I'm going to do or whatever I'm doing or whatever I've just brought out results. And I often post uh, technically challenging cases on my YouTube or Instagram channels and also on the, all the others. So yes, uh, I would love it if you follow me on that. So Dr. Jacob, thank you very much for your time and sharing your insights with us. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. So that was Dr. Susan Jacob from Mice TV. Stay tuned for more such content from global ophthalmic leaders who are changing the landscape in ophthalmology with their innovations. Until then, stay focused, stay visionary.